Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine uh, the vertices, the center, the co-vertices, as well as the foci of an ellipse. So basically, in the last video, uh, we did the exact same thing, except the center was at the origin 0, 0. So we already had that kind of knocked out of the way. Um, in this example, though, we need to figure out what the center is. And I wrote in the center, and it's just like our videos for a circle. The center is going to be h comma k. Um, basically, whatever we're subtracting from our x and subtracting from our k are going to be our h and our k. Now, um, I don't really want to get too in depth with this, but again, if you haven't watched any of those previous videos, um, remember we can rewrite a subtraction problem as x minus negative 3, because remember it's x minus h, right? Well, x minus negative 3 is the same thing as x plus 3. So if you look at this, what are you subtracting from 3? It's x minus h, x minus negative 3. That means h is equal to negative 3. So in this example, we can say that the center is at the opposite of 3, which is negative 3, and the opposite of 1, which is negative 1. OK, so once we kind of knock out the center, the next thing we want to do is find, figure out our a, b, and c. Um, remember that a represents, or actually I wrote in what a represents, b represents, and c represents. Um, remember, a is the distance from the center to your vertices, which represent your major axis, or your vertices are the endpoints of your major axis. Remember, the major axis is always larger than your minor axis. So therefore, um, a squared is always going to be larger than b squared, because b remembers the distance from the center to your covertices, and the covertices are the endpoints of your minor axis. Major axis is always larger than minor axis. A is the distance from the center of the vertices. B is the distance from the center of the co-vertices. Therefore, A is always going to be larger than B for an ellipse. So we have, if you look at your A squared and your B squared, it's as your denominators. So we have two. We just need to decide which one's A squared, which one's B squared. Well, remember, A squared is always larger than B squared. So therefore, I can make the determination that A squared is equal to 9 and B squared is equal to 4. Excuse me. Excuse me. OK. Um, so therefore, a is equal to 3, and b is equal to 2. Now again, to be able to determine what c squared is, we can use the relationship. So I can say that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is equal to 9 minus 4. c squared is equal to 5. Take the square root on both sides. c is equal to the square root of 5. Now, a lot of times it kind of makes sense of this. Again, we need to um, plot the information. This is the exact same thing I did for uh, when our center or when our center was at 0, 0. Actually, you know what? Let me write this in red so we can differentiate all the information. Oh, that's right. Center is at negative 3, negative 1. OK. Um, so we have a center at negative 3, negative 1. So I'm going to go negative 3, 1, 2, 3, down 1. All right. Now, I prefer to plot the information rather than doing some formulas that kind of make sense. Because once I can plot the information, I can determine where everything is at. Or I can determine what those values are that I'm going to write down. Now remember, a squared was 9, right? Because a squared was always larger than b squared. If a squared is under the x, that means my major axis is horizontal. So a lot of times what I like to do is I write in just my major axis. I write it as a nice dotted line, and I just write down major axis. This lets me not forget that the major axis is, or is horizontal. And that's very important because not only do the vertices lie in the major axis, the foci lie in the major axis. And the covertices lie on the minor axis, which is perpendicular to the major axis. And they intersect at the center. So even though these are not really a part of the graph, I'm not really graphing them. I'm just plotting the information so I know where it is. So I'm just going to plot in the minor axis, which is perpendicular to the major axis. OK. So um, to find my vertices, the distance from the vertice to the center is a, which in this case is 3. So I go to my center, and I say, all right, it needs to go along the major axis, 3 units to the right and 3 units to the left. Because remember, an ellipse has endpoints to the left and to the right. So what I'm going to do is from this point, I'm just going to go to the right 3 units, 1, 2, 3, and to the left 3 units, 1, 2, 3. You can see me. Good. Now, I basically just plot what are, actually, let's, move, let's do everything. Um, I'll go ahead and label those as my vertices. Now, I'm going to do, following that long same path, I'm going to do my um, co-vertices, which is the square root of 5. Now, 
we know that 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. So uh, square root of 5 is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. So I'm just going to approximate. So I'm going to go over 2 dash point something, over 2 point something, and say that's my foci, and that's my foci. Um, now to find my covertices, that's going to be the value of b from the center, which in this case is 2. So from my center, I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to go down 2. And I'll label those points, covertice and covertice. I think it's much easier to kind of visualize where the points are and then write the coordinate points rather than using the formulas um, that sometimes you'll find in a textbook or that your teacher will give to you, which I used to do as well. But I think it's just easier just to visualize everything and then write down the points. Um, all right, so my vertices, again, from the center are three units left and right because the major axis is horizontal. So my vertices end up giving me, um, now I end up giving me 0, comma, negative 1. And it looks like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, comma, negative 1. My foci are along that same axis. Now, here's where it kind of gets a little difficult because we know that uh, my vertices are going left and right from negative 3. So from negative 3, I'm going to add square root of 5, and I'm going to subtract square root of 5. Well, that's what I basically did here. From negative 3, I added 3, which gave me 0. And from negative 3, I subtracted 3, which gave me negative 6. Right? So that was easy to do. But what are you going to do with the square root of 5? You can't take the square root of 5 and add it to negative 3. So I'm just going to leave that as plus or minus the square root of 5 comma negative 1, because the y coordinate still is the same. And then lastly, my covertices, those are going to be up and down. So therefore, the x coordinate of my center remains the same. But from negative 1, I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to go down 2. So therefore, that's going to be negative 3, positive 1, and negative 3, uh, negative 3. OK, there we go. Um, in this next example, a lot of students will get kind of stuck on this because we won't have a denominator for 1. And they'll kind of say, you know, what do we do now? Well, again, we want to make sure it's written in this format, so let's write it into that format. If we don't have a denominator explicitly written, then we know then that that denominator is going to be 1. Now, our two denominators are 3 and 1. Remember, those represent a squared and represent b squared. Remember, a squared is always larger than b squared. So therefore, we can say a squared is equal to 3 and b squared is equal to 1. So yeah, let's use green. I kind of like that idea. All right, so I'm going to say a squared is equal to 3, b squared is equal to 1. Therefore, a is equal to the square root of 3, b is equal to 1, and c squared equals 3 minus 1. That's a squared minus b squared. So therefore, c squared equals 2, so c equals the square root of 2. OK, um, so again, now we look at our um, a squared, and we determine what variable is it under. A squared in this case is under the y. Now my, my major axis is going to be vertical. That means my ver from the center, my vertices are going to be going up and down. Um, and my covertices are going to be going left and right. So let's go ahead and plot the graph. All right, now we need to figure out what the center is. And a lot of times, students get stuck again with that x squared because they're like, well, what is, the, what is your h here, right? Because it's x minus h. Well, remember, um, or just realize that x squared is the same thing as x minus 0 squared. So therefore, h is going to equal 0. And k, you can see in this case, is the same thing as y minus k right? squared. Well, this is y minus 2 squared. So it's y minus k, y minus 2. y minus k, y minus 2. Therefore, k is equal to 2. So my center, which I'll write in red, h is 0, and k is positive 2. All right, so let's go and plot the information uh, we have. We have a center at 0, positive 2. No, let's plot this in red. So that's my center. Um, again, remember that my major axis is vertical, minor axis is horizontal. So I'm just going to kind of, actually, you know what? I'll just do major. And I'll just, so, and then I'll just do here minor axis. Actually, I want to just go all the way through. OK. So those are going to be the axes that my vertices and covertices, as well as foci, are going to lie on. Um, so my major axis, uh, my vertices, 
which is a distance of square root of three. And again, you know, square root of three, you know, you can just approximate, you can plug it in your calculator. But again, just realize like one squared is one, two squared is four. So the decimal is between one and two, right? So it's gonna be one point something. So like there's my vertice and here's my vertice. Um, my, oh wait a minute, that's square root of three. Ooh, square root of two is gonna be similar, it's just gonna be a smaller decimal. And you know, just to even approximate, let me just kind of show you what I mean by that. Square root of three is 1.73, square root of two is 1.41. <laughs> so square root of three is 1.73, approximately, and the square root of two is 1.41. Now again, these aren't really that important because I'm not asking you to graph, but hopefully you just realize that the foci and the vertices are right next to it, really, really close to each other, and they're between one and two. Whereas my covertices is a distance of one, and they're going left and right. Okay, but again, the main purpose of this video is to find the covertices, foci, and center. Um, the main thing, though, is graphing it is just, again, realizing that it's a major axis, so therefore your vertices and your foci lie on your major axis that is vertical. So my vertices um, are going to remain with the same x-coordinate, which is 0. We're just going up or down, and they're going to go up or down to plus or minus a, which is square root of 3. My covertices are going up or down C, I'm sorry, my vertices, yeah, covert, oh, I guess I did say covertices. Okay, covertices are going left and right from the center. So if the center's at zero, we're going left one and right one, the Y coordinate still remains the same. So that's going to be uh, negative one comma two and positive one comma two. My foci, I guess I did switch those around. My foci are also going up and down, but they're going up and down C. So the center, so this, notice the foci still has an x-coordinate of 0. It's just going up or down from the center. So therefore, that's going to be um, x-coordinate is still 0, and that's going to be 2 because that's where the center is. So from 2, we're going up square root of 2, excuse me, down square root of 2. So that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. <clears throat> okay, let's get into the next one. Uh, the next example is almost like exactly the same. Uh, um, all right, so the next example, we're going to do the exact same thing. But notice we don't have an a squared or a b squared. And what we need to do, but to counter that, notice that both of these equations are equal to 1, where these two equations are not equal to 1. So therefore, what the first thing we need to do is divide so they are equal to 1. I guess I could have done that. OK. Now, just like distributive property, if I have a times b plus c, we know that's ab plus ac. Well, if I have b plus c divided by a, that's equal to b over a plus c over a. So if I'm dividing this expression, or these two terms separated by addition, that 18 needs to divide into both of them. So therefore, I'm actually left with an equation x minus 3 squared over 18 plus um, that becomes 1 half, y plus 2 squared over 2, because 9 over 18 is 1 half, equals 1. Okay, now I don't need all of this information anymore. All right, so let's go and figure out what a squared, b squared, and c squared are. a squared, remember, is always the larger of the two, so we have our two denominators. a squared has to be 18, so let's say a squared equals 18, and I'll say b squared is equal to 2. Um, a squared, so a is equal to the square root of 18. Uh, to kind of make this video not so long, I'm just going to simplify this on my own. Uh, you can watch some other videos that I have, hopefully, to simplify radicals. So that becomes 3 square root of 2, um, whereas b equals the square root of 2. <sighs> to find c squared, that is equal to a squared minus b squared, so that's going to be 18 minus 2. 18 minus 2 is 16. So c squared equals 16. That means c is equal to 4. 
OK, um, so now again, we need to determine, does it have a major axis, um, major axis that's horizontal, or a major axis that's vertical? And again, that depends on where a squared is. If a squared is under x, you have a horizontal major axis. If a squared is under y, you have a um, vertical major axis. So you can see that my a squared of 18 is under the x. So therefore, I have a major axis. So I'm going to plot the information again. And uh, I'm going to plot the center. And I'm going to label that. Remember, it's always the opposite, as I kind of uh, explained over here. So therefore, in my case, we have the center is at 3 comma negative 2. I'll plot that information over here. So I go 1, 2, 3, down 2. And then I'll label it so I don't forget. I'm also going to label the major and the minor axis so I don't forget. So I'll just put a nice little line here. And I'll say that's the major. And then I'll do a perpendicular line, because the major and axis are perpendicular, and I'll label that the minor axis. Okay? And again, this is also helpful, because now that we know a, all we need to do is move the, the distance or the value of a from the center along the major axis. Because the major axis, or sorry, the um, vertices as well as the foci lie on the major axis, and the covertices lie on the minor axis. Um, all right, so we know a, which is the square root of 18, or simplified as 3 radical 2. Well, you know what? Yeah, let's go and say it. Um, we know 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, so it's going to be 4 point something. And again, we're just, I'm just sketching this so I kind of have an idea. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Kind of get out there. So from here, so from the center, I'm going to go a to the right, a to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 point something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 point something. And I'll label those my two vertices. My foci also goes left and right. However, that goes left and right 4. So from my center, I'm going to go to the right 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Foci. And to the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And my covertices lie along my minor axis, which covertices is square root of 2, which is going to be 1.41, right, which I said. So I'm going to go kind of up one, and I'm going to go to go down one. And again, I'm not, you know, you can, you can connect these if you like to. That's not really the purpose of my video, though. Um, I only really kind of graph, so I have a visual way of writing down the information. So uh, my center is at 3 comma negative 4. My vertices are going to be left and right from my x coordinate, right? I have an x coordinate of 3. I'm going to go to the right. A, which is um, 3 radical 2, and I'm going to go to the left, A. So basically, I'm going to take my x-coordinate, and I'm going to do plus or minus 3 radical 2, comma, negative 2. For my foci, which also lie left or right, I'm going to go plus or minus 4. So I'm going to do 3 plus or minus 4, um, comma, negative 2. Now, in this case, I, I didn't break that one down. But here, you can obviously simplify this, right? So I'm assuming you're more, your teachers are not going to want to see this, nor do I want to see it. So break that up. What's 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7, and 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So I'll write that as 7 comma negative 2 and negative 1 comma negative 2. And then last one, last but not least, is your covertices. OK, and covertices is going to be a distance of b, which is square root of 2. Now that's going to be up or down. So the x coordinate remains the same, right? But now we're going up or down. So we're going to be adding and subtracting square root of 2 to the y coordinate, which is negative 2. So we do 3 comma negative 2 plus or minus square root of 2. <sighs> Almost there. Almost there. All right, last example, we're going to do the exact same thing. It's not set equal to 1. To determine all of our information, we have to have our ellipse set equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by 18. I'm sorry, divide by 36 on both sides. When I simplify this fraction, 18 over 36 is 1 half. 6 over 36 is 1 sixth. So therefore, I can rewrite this as x minus 1 squared over 2 and plus Oh, yeah, I guess I could. Yeah, yeah well. Um, that's going to be y plus 3 squared equals 6 equals 1. Let's do a squared again. a squared equals, remember, a squared is a larger number, which in this case is 6. So a squared equals 6. b squared equals 2. 
Um, that means a equals the square root of 6, b equals the square root of 2, c equals uh, 6 minus 2, or sorry, c squared. So therefore, c equals um, c squared equals 4. So therefore, c equals 2. Right? Um, we'll go ahead and plot the information. Uh, plotting the information, my center is going to be at 1, comma, negative 3. So over 1, down 3. 1, 2, 3. I now have, that's my center. Um, since my a squared is under the y, that means I have a vertical major axis. See, this one had a major vertical axis. This one has a vertical. And then has a horizontal minor. OK. Um, and I hate the radicals, right? But it's OK. Um, you know that 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. So therefore, um, square root of 6 is going to be between 2 and 3. So again, we're going up and down for my vertices. So I'm going to go up to decimal. That's going to be my vertices. Down to decimal. That's my other vertice. Uh, my foci is going to be plus or minus 2. So from here, I'm going to go up to from my center and down to. That's my foci. And then my uh, co-vertices, which are going left and right, is going to be square root of 2, which again was 1.41. 1, 1. So that's going to go to the left and to the right. The main important thing I want you guys just to kind of understand is noticing the difference between when we have a major horizontal axis, a minor horizontal axis. Uh, and as well as understanding that along the major axis lies the foci and the vertices, lies the minor axis is the covertices. So now let's just go ahead and label everything. I just kind of did this problem and didn't really work my way through because I just want to kind of make the video uh, move along a little bit. So my center in this case is going to be 1 comma negative 3. Um, 1 comma negative 3 based of the opposites. My vertices so from my centers at 1 comma negative 3, my vertices are going up or down. So they're going up or down a value of a. So that means it's going to change the y coordinate. Because from your vertices, you're going up, moving up. You're adding that to y and subtracting that from y. So my vertices are going up or down a. So that's going to be 1 comma plus or minus the square root of 6. My foci are going up or down 2. Well, you can just add 2, right? Add 2 to negative 3 and subtract 2 to negative 3. So again, the x, but the x coordinate's not changing. It's just the y coordinate. So that's going to be 1 comma uh, negative 1, as well as 1 comma negative 5. And then last but not least is the covertices. That's going left or right. So that means my x coordinate's going to change. And my x coordinate's going to change the value of b, which is square root of 2. So that's going to be 1 min uh, plus or minus the square root of 2 comma negative 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the center, foci, vertices, as well as covertices of an ellipse. Thanks.